Hello, and welcome back to Zim Explorer. I'm Dr. Abstract, and in this Zim Explorer, we're going to take a look at a contest that we did a while back, maybe three years ago. And I thought it was fun. I found that on the Zim site. So let's go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com. And what we want to do is take a look under the examples. There's a marquee, and in that marquee uh, is an ad for this contest that we did. I think we also did the front, yeah, we did the front of Zim leading up to that. Let's see if we can find that first. Okay, so before we find the marquee ad, let's go see what the, the front of Zim looked like at the time. I believe it might have been under logo play. And if we scroll right down to the bottom, oh, it's not there. Okay, so where was that then? Uh, maybe under Zim 10. Yeah, okay, let's check that out. Uh, under the examples, under, well, no, sorry, under about, we have a history of the various versions of Zim right here, NFT, cat, here it is, 10. Let's see if this looks like, oh yeah, there we go. Okay, so check this out. Make zaps for 2,000, or no, 202 dollars make 10 to 2020 for a total of yeah okay so 10 of them uh we were giving away 10 of these 220 dollars each was that or 202 dollars each and this is what the front cover of zim looked like at the time how exciting huh wow look at that stuff oh my gosh and zim 10 looked like that okay so um zaps are here and I don't know what this leads to. Okay, tool to, okay, so this is a tool. Now it's become zaps. So what happened was when we did the contest, we called these things zaps. I wonder if I have the original for that. I, I don't know if, I don't know if I do, but um, for the contest, they were called zaps and we liked that name and we made a tool called zaps to make mobile apps from it. So that came after the, con this, this page came after the contest. Uh, ah, too bad, huh? But if we go under examples, then we can do a search for marquee. I think marquee. Mm, do you see it? There it is. Zim marquee right here. So where is it? It's under featured. So under featured, and these things shift around, but it's near the bottom of the featured marquee. So what marquee was is. Um, a banner, well, it's still around, it's Zim Marquee, and it gives you these dots and it can do interactive ads here. So uh, these things are these things are interactive, so I hit go, it goes there, but here, I'll give you an example. I pick that up and I can now drag and every node I get to spells out learn, teach. Now, I'm not gonna finish it because if I finish it, learn or learn or teach with code. And then if this says Zim, bum, 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 it actually is gonna take me through to a certain place like the Zim school or something like that. <laughs> Isn't that cool? So that's an interactive ad that when you finish it, it just like leaves this page <laughs> and goes to a results page without you even <laughs> confirming. But that's that one. And note that as we play this, the marquee stops. If I pop on back to the first one, that looks kind of cool. This is interactive. These are live. If I hit M MVC, it goes to model view controller. See that? Let's uh, close that down and turn off the model view controller. So these things are live. That's that's Zim stuff right inside of this uh, this ad. There's a bunch of animations and stuff. Uh, that one we saw. This one is you know, there again. It's like, well, wait a minute. This is showing Zim Retina. It, this is live. This is actually Zim and showing <laughs> when we launched Zim Retina. Um, that's an animation for code in five minutes. This one was uh, just some twisty thing for some news. That's the one we're looking for called Mission. As well, take a look at the rest of these. This was like a Zim intro, the new Zim intro thing. This is uh, draggable right here inside of an interactive ad. And there's um, a go to Zim Shim, so not much interactive, but we were advertising Zim Shim at the time. But check out this one. Well, we don't actually know what it says because it's all scrambled, but it's M I S M S I O N S. All right, press for excitement. Look at this. So isn't that neat? 
Oh crap, it went. <laughs> there it is. So um, if I want to pause that, I can pause it and play it. Over here, it's called Zim Marquee, and it will come to this page, I think, if you click on it and give you more information about Zim Marquee. So one of our users in Zim uh, just made a marquee. I don't know if they knew about marquee, but this is sort of an unusual marquee. It can be a bigger size as well, but the marquee has the, uh, what's that called again? The indicator right here. This is a Zim indicator, the vertical indicator rather than one underneath. So she had made quite a nice, straightforward, traditional marquee with some dots underneath. And I, I think there was a, she had a swipe to it as well. And um, we're considering launching that in some manner. Uh, if we already have a marquee in Zim and, and this is it, all set up, like I said, to do interactive um, advertising, which, by the way, as it says here, we've been doing for a long time. Um, I... Did, well, it wasn't exactly a company, but I imagined it might be called Ad Inventor. And I've been doing interactive um, advertising. As a matter of fact, I coined the term interactive advertising. I typed it into Webcrawler, which was our search engine before Google, and it wasn't there. <laughs> so, you know, there's me. I made a site called Admusements, which was, eh, it's all in the Dan's and history sort of thing. But anyway, um, I've been doing interactive advertising for a long time. Uh, I was responsible for releasing Vulcans, I guess, as these things that would go across the page in certain ways. Uh, but uh, that aside, here's missions. So this was uh, this was an ad for the contest, as well as, of course, that big front page of Zim that was going. Oh, unscram oh, now we got unscrambled letters again. <laughs> Darn. M, I, and think about this with the scrambler. Look at how many S's there are. How does it know if, so it's not just that these have to be in the right place. It actually knows that that works. So uh, think about that and check out the scrambled docs. I'm going to pause this before it goes somewhere. Um, think about this and check out the scramble dots to see how uh, scrambler docs so that you can see how to provide a solution that's a multiple solution. So in other words, uh, there are multiple solutions here. How do we handle that? Uh, check out the docs and we can show you. But anyway, that solves it when it spells with this S there or that S there, or maybe this S there, that I there, that I there, or swap the I's or whatever, and it's still would be able to solve it. So I'm gonna press for excitement now. Hopefully you've been enjoying this so far though. It is of course um, a Zim Explore and that means that we can do anything we want. We can spend some time looking at some stuff. <laughs> so a Zim Explore. All right, let's uh, hit the press for excitement. And here we are in, in the Zim 10. So this is Zim 10. We didn't bother updating this Zim 10 page to the uh, current template of Zim. This is what it used to look like, by the way. Um, we didn't have any of the main links here. The main links were always at the bottom of that. And if you ever wanted to you know, get back to, to the main links, you would hit Zim and that would lead you to the 10 banners. So we introduced the 10 banners there and, and other things on that. So anyway, um, make zaps quick Zim apps to complete missions. So once again, this was created before the Zaps tool, which is our, our now our name for the, the mobile apps uh, tool. And here we go down into the missions. This is the first mission, mission to follow. Create a Zim Zap. Let's make this a little bit bigger for us. Create a Zim Zap that uses frame follow or physics follow. Post at zimjs.com slash slack. So here's the link to join Slack, free and easy, to get the mission parameters. And indeed, because Slack is now our Slack, Zim Slack, usually uh, these days anyway, expires after three months. It used to be something like they gave us 10,000 posts for free and the other posts were taken away from us. Uh, it's a ridiculous amount. It's like $6 per uh, user of Slack. We've got 600 people on Slack. Uh, like we're not spending $3,600 a month to, to get a paid version of Slack. So anyway, that's, that's unfortunate. 
Um, but uh, we're they've given us some sort of month free, and we happened to stumble upon this in our month free. We did a search on Slack, and, and that means that the, the posts go all the way back to the beginning of Zim. So you might want to take a look. I, I don't know when you're going to see this video, but if you happen to see this video as, as soon as it's posted or shortly thereafter, we've got another six days before this all goes away. So I'm going to show you, we're going to explore the old um, uh, messages on Slack that related to this contest. So there you go. Uh, what it was, I think there were 10 of these maybe, or what we're going to see. So this is uh, mission two. And then you would try and build a zap. And we had judges. I'll show you in the in the forums. We had judges taking a look at the results of that. And then we would uh, award the winner uh, for, for that. I believe it was each month. That was sort of a monthly contest. Uh, the winner for that month would be awarded $202. <laughs> All right. So mission, beady eyes. Create a Zim Zap that uses Zim Bead and Zim Dial. Post at zimjs.com slash slack. So you're getting the idea? Check this guy out. Who's that? Dr. Abstract, looking pretty serious. <laughs> a Dr. Abstract car. Antonio, thank you for those illustrations, animations. Very nice. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there he is, dumb, dumb. Uh, he gave us these animations, and sometimes the, the, the facial features were, you know, like... Uh, okay, you know, when are, when are we going to use that, that very serious look? Um, and so we thought this mission was a good opportunity. Usually I'm a pretty happy guy. Uh, coming down, mission decode Zimon. One of the things that I want you to sort of think about as we go through these missions is the variety of features in Zim that you're probably not using, <laughs> that you probably could use, uh, maybe don't even know about um, or haven't tried it. And so that's why we ran this contest is, hey, make something with this feature that you may not have explored before. So decode Zimon, create a, a Zim Zap that uses Zimon and local storage. So what Zimon does is it JSON, it JSON stringifies objects that are beyond strings and numbers. And maybe Boolean, I can't remember if it does Boolean. Uh, JSON that is. So imagine you make a new circle, and then you zim on that. It, it stringifies that. It turns it into a string that can be stored in local storage as JSON. And when you bring it back, we zimify it. Uh, no, sorry, we um, uh, zim on it. Uh, so we zim on parse and zim on, zim on stringify. So zim on stringify, zim on parse. I think we kept those words that Java use, uh, that JavaScript uses. Um, I, I, you know, because uh, uh, JSON, of course, comes from JavaScript. It's JavaScript object notation. Other languages can use it too. So isn't that neat? Think about that. Um, we are storing objects that are beyond just strings and, and numbers and arrays and objects, object literals, that is. Um, we are storing Zim objects and, and beyond. We can store a date in that too. But uh, Zim objects like that. Uh, a um, a list component, uh, button components, all those things can be stored inside of a string. All right, that's pretty phenomenal. There's there's not really too many frameworks or systems out there that that d does that. I think I may have heard of something else approaching that. I can't remember what it's called, like Svelte or whatever. Yeah, you know, I know what that's called, but I, I don't know which framework it was. It was doing something like that, like converting uh, the apps to strings in some way just so you could store it. Anyway, on we go. Um, mission escape loop. Create a Zim Zap that returns a value from a, Zim's, a Zim loop. Have you tried that? Did you know it can do that? Do you know why you would do that? Uh, basically, in a Zim loop, if you return that ex uh, return continues. So that's like a continue in a for loop. But if you return a value, that's a break. And often the reason why we break is because we've got a value that we want. So if you return the value, then you can assign that when you when you make the Zim loop, if you assign it to a variable, the returned value goes into the variable and you can look at what the variable is that caused it to break or like why you, uh, breaking isn't 
broken. Breaking is, I want to stop the loop now because I have my value. Well, if you assign that, you got your value afterwards. So that's very handy, which I just gave my students an exam. And on the exam, that was being used. Um, uh, so cool, huh? All right. So you may not know about that feature, and that's what this is. So hit on path, create a Zim Zap that uses the Zim hit test path and it, in a ticker add. So did you know that you can do a hit test on any path? Uh, that's also unusual. Um, it wasn't available in CreateJS. It's not available in most places. It's kind of complex. But because we have Blob and Squiggle that are paths, um, what we did is uh, in the update to Blob and Squiggle to make them work better, we found that we had the equations to put points along the path and that created Zim beads. It was the very first one here. Do you remember? Did we, did we actually pay attention to it? I'm sort of getting into it now. Oh, it was follow BDIs, create a Zim Zap that uses Zim beads. Zim beads places objects around a path like a squiggle or a blob, basically on that, and it can um, spread it out. You can do any number, and those can be interactive objects, etc. There's a, a Zim beads mini site. This is again something that you may not have used. But anyway, when we developed this, we realized oh, you know, if we can put points around a path, we could just check to see if any of those points are hitting some other shape. Much like we did hit test circle and hit test rect, where those are points around a rectangle or points around a circle, we realized oh, you know, we could use the same technology. We've got points on a path. Um, either a blob or a squiggle, and we can check to see if any of those points on the path hit hit a shape, and that's that's interactive. We also use that technology to figure out the bounds or to approximate the bounds. Um, when we discovered it, we used approximate bounds um, to approximate the bounds of a blob and squiggle. In I think the latest version of Zim or the Zim before, maybe Zim Zim 000, we made approximate bounds default. So now if you make a blob or a squiggle, it will start off with the right bounds. It didn't used to before. Uh, much like shape, shape, Zim, uh, zim shape, create jail shape, they don't start with bounds. You, you've made some weird shape. I have no idea what you made. We have no idea what you made. We can't figure out the bounds from that. Go ahead. Um, we probably could figure out the bounds from it, you know, just by... Uh, a point cloud or something like that and just choosing the highest point below you know, etc but that that would be a little processor intensive and so uh, we haven't done that with the shape that would be, be a bit tricky anyway that was beads but we were down on hit test path okay so all that stuff is happening um, from that mission swiper create a zim zap that uses zim swiper and a sprite, um, so a sprite and Zim Swiper. Have you tried Zim Swiper? You basically can swipe and keep on swiping. So what if you swiped to scrub through the sprite? So every time you swiped, the sprite would go forward. If you swipe backwards, this and this is actually from an exam too. I gave my students, we had this book that was a sprite, like it opened up and pages flipped. Well, if you swiped the book, the pages would play. And if you swipe the other way, the pages would play backwards. So it was very cool. Uh, have you tried that? I mean, here you go. Uh, by the way, you might be um, sort of looking at these beautiful backgrounds that are here. This, These were uh, created in a tool made by Frank Force or Killed by Pixel. Um, he has now become quite the star on FX Hash, you know, making $4,000 for a generative art piece. And it's like amazing, traded, uh, well done. He certainly deserves it. And this, he also um, helped uh, make the sound tool. We've got a pixel sound tool called Synth. And when you do synth.play, it's his, it's his pixel synth that's in there. If you do um, a synth.tone, uh, that's a synth, you know, that's controlling synthesizers with wah and all that kind of stuff. That was, that was our work in Zim. But if you do the play to play like kind of a pixel, there's an actual tool that he made that makes little pixel sounds for, for games. And you can record the data from that and play it right in Zim without any sound. Uh, like as in there's no sound object anywhere. It's just a bit of data. So that's cool. 
Um, anyway, this is with a, an art tool that does these gradations. And what you do is it randomizes, or I'm not sure how he built it. It randomizes it, and you choose which ones you'd want. And then it makes things that are similar to that. And you keep on going. So it was actually like a fair amount of work for us to get images that we liked for this. But aren't, the, aren't they beautiful? It's cool, huh? So anyway, we're using that uh, here as the backdrops. So the next one, Mission Layers of Deception. Create a Zim Zap that uses Zim... Oops, sorry, I made that bigger. And where'd it go? Let me F11 this too, maybe. And I could maybe make it one step bigger for you. Yeah, so we can see that. Ooh, yeah. So create a Zim Zap that uses Zim Layers and Transform Manager. So layers. Um, do you know what layers do? It's not the same as levels. Well, this is kind of the same, I guess. But, well, it's not the same as levels as in uh, when a container has children, it's at different levels. We often say levels or layers. Inter we interchange that. But layers is a Zim class as well that collects, transforms, and blobs and squiggles. So in other words, if you transform a container, all the stuff inside it will transform. But what if, you know, altogether, if you can transform a shape, all of that stuff will transform. But what if you want um, to be able to transform the container, but also be able to transform the things inside the container? And so that's what Zim Layer is doing. Uh, it was very, 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 complex code to be able to do that. And it is quite handy. We were building that in conjunction with a Swedish company that was using that. Um, it, it's kind of like, let me think, how, how can we describe it? I, I'm not sure if even Photoshop does that. Uh, can Photoshop nest layers? I can't remember. Flash can. So it's kind of like the same idea of um, clicking on a movie clip and having movie clips within movie clips. If you click on a movie clip, you can transform the whole outer movie clip. If you double click to go into it, then you can start transforming the parts inside. That's kind of what it's like, except it's got some handy features. It's got uh, little tabs at the top that can dock. So you can dock the tabs on the side or you can bring them back and make them go back on the little uh, ghost outlines, it's called dot, dot, dash, dash, dashes. So you should check that out. And remember that our transform tool allows the user to transform any display object. And uh, you don't use them on blobs and squiggles because they have their own way of, of transforming. In a sense, you pull their points about. Uh, but blobs and squiggles also work within this layer system. All right, next then, boom, boom, boom. Blending, create a Zim Zap that uses radial gradient and bleh, bleh, blend mode. So we've got a radial gradient. It's, these are gradients like this. Um, we don't have a gradient that can, you know, it's, it's either circular or oval or whatever, but we don't have one that sort of changes uh, shape like that. How can you do that? We have blend mode, so you, you would, if you can make those shapes with blobs or squiggles, then you can apply a blur to the corners or to the ed a blur to the blob or squiggle and it would end up with an effect like that. So we could make that with um, a blurred blob or squiggle and let the users change that as well. So right now this was made in the tool and I just had to do whatever that came out of the tool. I don't really have, I couldn't manipulate the results very well. I just had to choose which one I liked, and then that would build one that looked like that again, and I could choose, you know, go deeper into it, which was pretty cool. I don't know if you remember Photoshop had something like that called variations or something. Um, we're doing things like that too. It, it very much reminded us, or me anyway, of um, when we are prompting AI art as well. So when you prompt Mid Journey, for instance, and, and most of them, you're able to say, ah, oh, give me ones that are like that. Uh, give me variations of that. And then it will make more. So it's very much like what it was. But anyway, with Zim, we could provide people these blobs and squiggles. This is kind of meta right now. I'm just talking about this picture, not really the blending here. Although maybe it relates to blending. Uh, we could provide the blobs and squiggles with handles 
and apply a, a blur effect to the edges and it might make something like that. Uh, and then people can change the shape and you know work with that. Much, much like in Photoshop, you could change paths, I guess, or at least in Illustrator. Photoshop kind of with paths, but Illustrator's known for that. But does Illustrator blend? Uh, does it blur edges and stuff in Illustrator? I can't remember. I think you then would take that into Photoshop and then apply blurs in Photoshop. Anyway, let's move along. Uh, radial gradient, by the way, just a reminder, radial gradient and what's the other one? Uh, gradient color. Radial gradient. That's not even what it is, is it? I don't think so anymore. I think it's gradient color. So that's like wrong or old. Yeah, so that might have been how we did it before. Anyway, um, yeah, before I think we had to make, we had to use special create.js uh, methods or something on that on it. And then we brought in colors. So we have gradient color and radial color. That's what you want to look at. So don't pay, ignore that one. You want gradient color. Not only that, but we have then since in this latest version of Zim made gradient color and radial color easier, more intuitive. It's not, it's almost as easy as HTML, uh, CSS gradients, CSS gradients. You can just put in some colors with commas with Zim. It's almost that you put in an array of colors. We just, just didn't like sitting there loose with the number of, we have other parameters to add as well. So uh, CSS can just provide, well, it's almost like, uh, what would it be called? Um, uh, it's, is it a comma separated list? I can't remember how, how they do it. But anyway, uh, we want to stick to JavaScript and in JavaScript, it made more sense to make that a list. So basically you can put in a list of two, two colors or three colors and it will, that's it. That's all you need. And it will gradient between that. If you recall the traditional way, the create JS way, it's not that at all. You put in an array of colors and you put in an array of, uh, what ratios those colors will be. And then you put the start X and the start Y, and then you put the end X and the end Y, or if it's radial, you have to put the, the X and Y of the start plus the radius plus the X and Y of the N plus the radius, <laughs> you know, so it's like you want to do a radial gradient, you were stuck doing eight parameters. And, and so we simplified that because that's part of our mission, our mission, anyway, mission, mission, mission. Part of Zim's mission is to continue to make things as easy as possible. So if any, any time there's something that could be done easier or simpler, uh, you know, you let us know, and we're constantly thinking about it as, as that shows, you know, I mean, we're still making changes to things like gradients and we're on version, whatever, uh, you know, we've gone through 10 and then cat and then, or no, uh, NFT, then cat, no cat, then NFT now on version Zim. I think that makes us either 13 or 14. Yeah. It makes it 13. Shh. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> Nothing like ending Zim on, on version 13. <laughs> I can't remember what we did. We may have jumped version 13 in uh, on uh, Node Package Manager. So in Node Package Manager, they force you to use numbers for versions. And so we just kind of went up. And then there was a question, do we, you know, this is our last version of Zim probably, do we call it 13? <laughs> do we go to 14? And I think we just went to 13. <laughs> Living dangerously. There you go. Okay. Uh, right. Let's go on. This is mission eight. So, well, I don't know. This only looks like it's halfway there. I thought there were only 10, but I could be wrong. Maybe, maybe they were weekly. I'm not sure. But uh, there's eight. Create a Zim Zap that uses radial gradient. Right. We talked about it. And bleh is blend modes. That's called composite operation in, in CreateJS. What's going on with my scroll here? That's called comp, uh, what was it? Um, composite operation in on the canvas. So CreateJS just called it the same as what the canvas called it, composite operation. <laughs> and then we're kind of going, you know, we actually do have kids using Zim. Could we possibly call it something a little bit simpler than composite operation? <laughs> So um, we changed it to blend mode because that's what Photoshop uses. It's a little bit more accessible in terms of wording. 
And then when we went to the short chainable version of um, blend mode, it's bleh. <laughs> Maybe kids will like that. Bleh. <laughs> Very nice. Okay, so coming on down, asynchronous. Create a Zim Zap that uses Zim Async and data. Again, here is another thing that people may not realize that Zim has because they're using Zim for their front end uh, sort of creative work. And uh, we have async, which is JSON P. It's an alternative to Ajax. So it allows you to get data to and from the server without reloading the page, except it's JSON P, which avoids security of Ajax. We also have Ajax. So there's an Ajax class in Zim, um, which you can use for the same purpose. Um, but there's also async, which is JSONP, so a sort of more sublime way of handling it. All right. Um, Zim also has, since this time, it didn't, it didn't have in Zim 10, I don't think. I think bind may have been introduced halfway through Zim 10 or something. Zim 10 was huge. Zim 10, we thought we were done and Zim 10 was huge. There were all sorts of versions of, of Zim in Zim 10, and many of those subversions, Zim 10.1, 10 10.2, 10.3, all the way up to 10.7 or something like that, many of those subversions are bigger than our current major versions. So, you know, that was, that was a huge time. I think bind was in there. So we have bind for data. Bind rivals platforms like Vue, for instance, Vue binds. Uh, Dreamweaver was trying to get binding to work, and then people left Dreamweaver. <laughs> Dreamweaver, when that happened, I think that's why I left Dreamweaver. Is like, what the heck are you guys trying? You're you're making us insert a bunch of PHP and binding crap to it. It's like, holy cow! Goodbye. And I think any designers took a look at that and said, what the heck are you bloating this with? And they dropped down to a Sublime Atom brackets. Uh, suppose you probably heard that uh, Adam has been grandfathered now or is about to be grandfathered. It's kind of too bad. That sort of makes sense. Microsoft bought GitHub. GitHub, uh, GitHub built Adam, which is the text editor that I use. GitHub built Adam and Git, um, Microsoft has VS Code. So those two things are in direct competition. Uh, sort of. The only thing is, is designers tend not to really like using Microsoft you know, for things. So uh, one of the reasons we went to Adam is it, it was just sort of, it was cool and free and fresh and you know more open source feeling, et cetera. VS Code is probably fine. I'm sure it does all the same things, if not, you know, if not more. But uh, they've decided to continue with VS Code. So be it, they're Microsoft, you know, why not? You know, whatever, it's just, we sort of lose out a little bit with no Adam. I, don't know exactly what I'm going to do. Probably go to VS Code. I teach. I teach at Sheridan. And at Sheridan, I teach in the School of Computing. And so our interactive media program, we use we use Atom and we're much, well, we use Atom Sublime. Actually, our, our web development teacher uses um, VS Code. So... You know, on the art side, though, on the, on the more creative art side, maybe Sublime would be to go to. I just don't feel like uh, Sublime was a little bit tricky. Don't quite feel like going to Sublime. I'll probably just move to VS Code and live with it. <laughs> anyway, we'll see. So there's the, uh, the async and data. Moving along here. Game time. Create a Zim Zap that uses a motion controller and a game pad. So there's another thing. Did you know that Zim has gamepad support? Well, JavaScript has gamepad support, but Zim makes it even easier. It brings it into the motion controller and you just say, hey, use a game stick or use a game buttons. It's got all sorts of mapping built in there. But if you just say motion controller, type game stick and, and plug in your joystick, it works just like it works just like using a keyboard, you know, right away. It's like, oh, there we go. Easy, easy peasy. It's two parameters in the motion controller. The first thing is the object. If I go new motion controller, new cert round brackets, new circle, put the new circle in there, dot center, comma, game stick in quotes, right? 
that gives me a circle sitting on the stage. And if I pick up my motion, if I pick up my um, my joystick here, or my controller, and start using the stick, the circle goes in the direction the stick stick says to go. <laughs> you get that? New motion controller, new circle dot center. That centers it on the stage. That's the first parameter is what you want to control. Second parameter is what type. If you say game stick, there, there you go. That's it. Usually you're, you're doing something like mouse down or mouse move or press move. There's a variety of different ones that say the pen works with. That's cool. You can throw a pen in there and control the pen with a joystick. Nice. So this is hopes that you might want to try that out. Um, and moving along here, we have the noise. So mission noise, bum bum. Create a zim zap that uses zim noise and ticker. Okay, ticker.add. So noise, how do you animate noise? This is somewhat noisy looking. So noise will give you squiggly, that's a little bit out of whack there, but noise will give you squiggly. As a matter of fact, this is probably noise, chopped. So um, noise equation can give you waves, but if you go one more dimension to three dimensions, then it makes like bumps. And if you just chop the bumps at a certain level, you end up getting this. You see how that could be like bumps? So uh, it's almost like, mm, how to describe? <laughs> so, so, almost like taking a cake and seeing the layers in a cake and, and you chop it, this is what you get, like a cross section of these layers. So noise can look like this too. This might all be noise based. Frac it's fractally feedback noise kind of crap. Oh, not crap, crud. <laughs> Same thing, crap, crud, uh, crafting. Crafting, crafting with um, feedback, yes. That's what I meant to say. All right, so that's that one. Sequence, sequence. Brrr. Create a zim zap that uses zim tile and animate sequence. So you gotta check that out. You make a tile of any any type, and if you say tile dot animate, um, some sort of scale or something like that, comma sequence colon point one. Instead of animating the whole tile to a scale it will then animate each individual object in the tile or in any container, but we've suggested a tile here because that is a container. Um, any object in the container, it will animate the first one in there, the lowest one, the lowest one comes first, and then 0.1 seconds later, or whatever you put for the sequence time, 0.1 seconds later, it animates the next one, 0.1 seconds later, it animates the next one, and they end up going in a sequence. You've probably seen that. We've done that in a fair number of demonstrations. But as far as I know, maybe Greensock has, I'm sure Greensock has some way, I think it's called Stagger maybe. I think they called their Stagger. Uh, and they're all proud of that. You know, it's worth being proud of, but we've had sequence right from the beginning and it's um, very powerful, very cool. A wow effect. For instance, when we were doing an exam study or an exam example, what was it? Not a review exam, exactly. Yeah, exam review, that would make sense. Um, I had them make a tile. Let's see, what was that thing that they made? It was something like a tile. I can't remember. Was it a tile? Uh, it was like a container with some stuff in it. And I had them chop it up. So Zim's got chop. I don't think it had chop for this maybe because mission used chop yeah so it was right around the time of chop matter of fact maybe we'll come to chop down below here um for us to be able to use the scrambler so when we developed the scrambler for zim cat that was after zim 10 after we thought we were on our last version hey 10 sounds like a great last version doesn't it uh well actually let's uh let's carry on we'll change her up a bit we called it zim cat the next version and we made the scrambler for that and that's been very handy but for the scrambler to work we have chop which chops up any display object into a tile if you want or into an array of, of bitmaps but anyway um if you chop and then so we had the, had the students try this out they chopped up something and then we animated the pieces with a sequence and when they saw that it was like Oh my God, like the whole class just kind of went, oh my God, look at that. Like, I loved it. I love seeing that. That was just, oh my gosh, we've just chopped something up and animated off the stage in a sequence, you know, like the pieces just go, beautiful. 
Okay, so anyway, try that out. Uh, animate and sequence. Shape shifter. Create a zim zap that uses zim animate to shape. Uh, <laughs> animate to shape. I'm not sure what I'm saying there. Um, there's a shape. Uh, let's see, how does that go? Okay, so if you have a blob, you can animate to another blob. If you have a squiggle, you can animate to another squiggle. Currently, they have to have the same number of points. That is a, uh, that's something we could potentially work on. I know that GreenSock or GSAP or GreenSock has it so the, the points don't matter. They can have a different number of points. Um, Flash has long had this, that's called a shape tween. So Flash at it or Adobe Animate now has a shape tween and they have it so that it can be a different number of points. They also have tips on theirs where you can put in certain tips. And so that's that helps to have a visual editor at that point. You gotta drag these tips around. We, I don't think I have tips. I think GreenSock might have ways to say, move this point to that point. So there is some work that we can do on that, but Zim does have a shape tween. Current, well, the thing about animating from one shape to another is that Zim's shapes, the blobs and squiggles, are user editable, first of all. So nothing else has that, nothing. Flash doesn't have it. The, the, the um, paper, which came from the people from Illustrator, you know, they, they're Bezier pros. They don't have it. They don't let the end user have Bezier points, only uh, during authoring, and you can use their, their platform to make Bezier points and stuff. Somebody did that. Somebody made Bezier points. It was something like 900 lines of code. In Zim, it's built in. You, we give that to the end user. So Flash doesn't have it. You can't, if Flash people or Animate can't give the end user Beziers. Zim can't. And these shapes and also animate. So in other words, the end user can make their own shape and make it change and, and animate to an, another shape that either uh, you've made as the author or that they've made. Okay. Um, and the other thing along with that for you has to have the same number of points. Well, Zim, you just press on the line, add a point. <laughs> you know, it's just like now if you don't have the same number of points, say one's got six and the next one's got seven, just go to the one that has six, press on the line anywhere, it's got the same number of points. You know, so it's not really, uh, it's not really that much of a problem to have different amount of points. Okay, because it, you know, it's very easy to add points. So moving along, that was um, the shape tween. So that's called the shape tween. Layout, how many, <laughs> these are like 14. We're just gonna take a peek here. Eight, 18, coming down, 20. So it looks, looks like there's 20. What the heck is going on with my scroll? It uh, looks like there's 20. And what number are we on? Can we make it? Are you gonna manage? Shapeshifter, okay. Layout. Create a Zim Zap that uses Zim Pages and Layout. That's quite well documented. Lots of examples of that. Being able to swipe from page to page. Being able to swipe from page to page uh, or click a button to go from page to page. In Zim Pages, if you make a page and a second page, you go New Pages and pass in an array of page one, page two. That's it. In Flash, it was okay. It was... Do you want to see? Are you getting tired of being here? Let me just pop into something here. This is going to go to a wrong place. Spotify. I'm still in F11. I don't have a, a, a little link to my browser, so this happened to be just a, something on my desktop. Julie Fazuli, DJ, is coming back to Fascination, which is amazing. So that's on Thursday. It's a couple days from now, so I'm looking forward to that. This is her Spotify list from the last time. Mm, very cool. Uh, but I was doing that just so I can go to Zim here, plop, and it looks like I'm zoomed so in. I've got the mobile version. Uh, what was I looking for again? <laughs> mm, not Julie Fazuli. Hey, Jules. Uh, we got the browser going. What were we looking at? We were looking at not noise sequence. Did this all of a sudden get smaller? Shapeshifter layout, right. So layout going, ah, right, 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 yeah. You might like this. Okay, if I can find it. Dan Zen on Flickr. 
Always dangerous to go look at photos. Here we go. So I'm Dr. Abstract. I'm also Dan Zen. It has been a long time since I've been on Flickr, but it looks like I'm still there. These are VR pictures of Burning Man. So cool, huh? So sculptures from Burning Man that was in VR. VR is 10 times better when you're actually in there. I mean, there's a picture. It looks kind of cool. But when you're actually in there, you're a person that's... that's a, this is a building. That's huge. You're having fun. Like all these sculptures are over my head. It, it feels feels great to be there. But anyway, that's not what I was wanting to look at. What I want is looking up albums, and I want to look up diagrams. So let's see. I want something that looks like diagrams. Remember, all this stuff is really old. It's like 10, 15 years old, something like that. See anything that says diagrams? Ah, there. Okay. So diagrams. And which diagram do we want? There I'm planning mobile, uh, tilt, tilt technology and stuff like that before it came out. Here it is. Okay. So this one right here. This is how to go from page, two pages. So you've got two pages, you've got two buttons. So each, there's, you see how this pink thing is a page? It's got a button. And here's the one that says return. This is a second movie clip. And when we click it, it goes back to the first one. So you had to sort of construct the pages, add the buttons. So that's some, you know, creating the pages. It wasn't too bad. You draw, drag and drop it on, no problem. But this is sort of what we, that zoom in enough? What we want to look at is the code to be able to do that. So we have some importing uh, page ones, page twos, uh, function switch, some button modes, add event listener, mouse clicks, next page, blah, blah, blah. This is the next page. Remove a child, add the other one. Remove the child, add the other one. So in Flash, it's not too bad. Still, it's not new page, new pages, round bracket, page one, page two, dot center. Okay. So in Zim, it's new pages. You pass in an array of page one, page two, or if you have more pages, continue on dot center round brackets okay that's it and that'll give you two pages to go between and we didn't make the pages yet but this isn't really making the pages either this is how we go from page one to page two making it all happened over here all right so that's that's um flash great and we have to name some instance names and stuff okay ready oh that's not it this is how the instructions on how to go from one page to another on the iPhone or for I uh, what is it called uh, not the iPhone can't seem to make this bigger um, oh there's a zoom Let click on that yeah okay so this is a zoom this is Xcode sorry uh, so mobile mobile uh, Apple stuff X Xcode so what is there objective C so here's what you have to do. You have to pick some stuff here. You got to pick some stuff there. You got to do this, is, like I said, to go from one page to another. Choose some stuff here. Choose, 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 and blah, blah, blah. Then you got to write some. So once you get code, their stuff has a header and a footer and a content for every single one. So there's our header that we need. Maybe that's a footer. There's some content. So that's stuff, page one. There's roughly trying to go back and forth there. Here's some more stuff for maybe the second page or something, you know, beyond, beyond even the pages. I don't know if I duplicate it. You got to do all this stuff. You got to assign this, drag this to that. You've got all these little, little nice looking kind of linky things where you drag it from here. This little line goes to there and it uh, sets that property. You can't really see that there. As a matter of fact, you can't see it because I'm not not even really zoomed in to the same. You see how small that font is versus the flash font. Okay, so in other words, we, we see all that, but we don't really get the sense of it until we do this. So now the font size is the same, and I've just overlaid the instructions on that. This was to go from one page to another <laughs> in Apple. Just recall that to go from one page to another in Zim is new pages, page one, page two, dot center. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, geez. I thought, I thought you might like that. 
Is that okay? I'm gonna, this is an explore. I'm gonna close this down now. Maybe one day we should explore um, uh, Dr. Abstract's uh, Flickr account. <laughs> Would that be fun? <laughs> anyway, that's, uh, so, lay uh, okay, that's pages. It's not even, and I'm asking you to use layout in this one as well. So what layout does is it will take these regions and fit the regions, scale the regions into uh, whatever um, size screen you have uh, for mobile, for instance. And these regions stretch and expand. They have mins and maxes of things. They have alignments, they have background colors, they've got margins. In other words, it's sort of what the Flexbox is doing. And as a matter of fact, it's called Flexive Design. Um, we uh, named it after Adobe Flex. Adobe Flex primarily was an XML-based uh, way to author in um, an authoring environment, uh, such as Flash Builder, I think it was called. And Flex was the language and system that did that. It's been given to Apache. I don't know what Apache has done with it, open sourced and given away in a sense. Um, but the main crux of that was responsive design for mobile so that these regions would scale into the right places. And yet within the regions, we keep the aspect ratio, or at least that's my interpretation of it. That's what we've done in Zim. We allow the regions to get bigger and smaller and shift and stuff, but the region's aspect ratios always remain the same. Unless, as we've improved in, in I think it was Zim, I think it was the end of Zim NFT, Zim NFT 2 maybe, either that or Zim version Zim 01. Um, we improved the layout so that we could have layouts within layouts, both horizontal and vertical. You could always do that, but they wouldn't, uh, a horizontal one wouldn't stretch inside of a vertical one. Because if you think about it, the vertical one wouldn't be changing its width. Yet we made that available to happen. Um, so you could have a look at that. It was Zimcat in Zimcat. So we launched that in Zimcat. Right? Do you want to see that? Just so you know what we're talking about. Here's Zim. And under examples, we hit collections. Because the collections of late, how we've done it is bits is always sitting here at the top. That used to be top left corner of examples because it's so handy. That's that's 64, 64 Zim bits, 64 examples of interactive media that you would use all the time, snapping and whatever, hit tests, etc. So that's there. That stays there. But the other ones, that's the Zim story that talks about Zim. These tend to be, hey, here's Zim Zim features. Here's Zim NFT features. There's some specific things. There's ZimCat, there's Zim10 features, there's Zim, Zim Neo features, so Zim9 features. There's the ones on beads. Okay, so um, the collections are groups of examples. And there's the, the one for cat. So what cat does is we recreated ZimCat here where you can drop that down. Remember this, oh, you know, I love, I love this thing. We can swipe, so that's all in pages, or we can use the arrows here. And this is the stuff that we introduced in ZimCat. Ah, there it is right there. So this is Zim layout. And uh, what we have is a content area. This is a horizontal layout, these two things, although you can put any number of things horizontally. When we started layout, layout was so complicated. It was the most complicated thing in Zim. Very complicated thing to do. That's why, by the way, Flex was called Flex when Flex kind of went away at the same time or shortly thereafter. Uh, you know, Adobe has major influence along with, you know, the other players, um, Microsoft and Google and Apple, major influence on what happens in HTML and CSS, obviously. Um, along came the Flexbox, all right? Probably from that complex Adobe code. Well, we built it in Zim Layout or something like it. Actually, Wrapper is very much like that too and parts of Tile is very like it. Um, tile... Zim tile is also responsive. I don't know if you've tried that out. Um, a lot of people just tile something that stays how it is, but it's actually responsive and it can collapse in on itself. I haven't seen that. It's a table that all the parts collapse in um, depending if it's squeezed. So that's called squeeze, it's in tile. So it's responsive like that, but it still maintains a grid-like structure. So it's probably like the, the, the grid in CSS. Um, layout, uh, or layout is these regions that I'm going to show you here just, just in a second, 
But then there's also wrapper, wrapper, wrap. So wrapper is more like Flexbox. It will wrap, but keep various alignments and, and all sorts of things. I even create these uh, voids in, in your content. So check out wrapper uh, with hopefully easier parameter names than the, um, the Flexbox, which you have to play Flexbox Froggy several times. They made, made a game. The, the, the system is so complex. There's, eh, I don't know, I'll call it flexible. So flexible, um, but still kind of strangely named, I suppose, that everybody who tries to learn it has to play Flexbox Froggy to try and figure it out. <laughs> still, I, I, you still couldn't put me in front of a Flexbox and have me do it without going in and playing Flexbox Froggy. Um, anyway, here is the Zim layout working both horizontal and vertical. So I'm going to pull that off. And here we're going to squeeze horizontally. Ready? Boop. So that, that I, this is responsive. It's responding. It's scaling. But this I call adaptive. It actually changed layout. So I call that adaptive design. So this is what we just added recently where it can both do horizontal and vertical, okay? We couldn't do that before, but we made a system to be able to do both horizontal and vertical. Previously, the layout was either choose vertical or choose horizontal. You could nest the other one in there, but it wouldn't actually change, okay? It could still be used to lay out. It's just it wouldn't stretch about. But now we figured out a way to make that happen. Also, by the way, um, built into here, uh, as a matter of fact, when we figured that out was when we were making the um, uh, wrapper. Okay, so the wrapper needed to be able to stretch and stuff, and we wanted the wrapper to stretch here in the layout. And so we worked out a system to make the wrapper stretch. And when we did, we went, oh, you know what? We could use the same system to embed uh, the opposite direction layout in here and make that stretch. And so that's that all came together. Uh, all right, so on we go, uh, close that, and we were closing that, and I can probably close that, and we're back here, okay. Trying to zoom in, where'd we get to? Shape shifter layout, okay, so pages and layout, a little bit of a, st <laughs> you know what though, I I'm so sorry. Uh, we started out, this is a Zim Explorer, how long have we been going? We are at almost an hour. We started off kind of quickly, where I was just like skimming them, but actually could have told almost the same number of stories that I'm telling now for those first ones as well. I just kind of skimmed over them, maybe. <laughs> Which one do you like? Do you, do you like the, the more in-depth or do you want, like the skimming? I'm not sure. Let's carry on though. The controller, did we do controller? I thought we already, oh no, this is motion. Uh, this is, sorry, not motion controller, but model view controller. So mission controller, create a Zim Zap that uses Zim tools. Uh, MVC. So under Zim Tools, there's a model view controller example. And so showing you, we developed a model view controller. I've seen lots of model view controllers before, but I have never seen a model view controller so simple, so straightforward, and so divided. Maybe it's the basic model view controller. I'm not sure because by the time I started looking at model view controllers, they could get quite complex. They could get into diagrams that had, you know, 30 circles on them all, all pointing to each other in various ways. <laughs> all right. Um, but the Zim model view controller is you make the model, you make the view, model view. You make the view and you pass it the model. You make the controller and you pass it the model and the view. Period. That's what your that's what your homepage looks like. <laughs> Not bad. Uh, you know, new model, next line. New new view, pass it the model. Next line. New controller, pass it the model, pass it the view, and then it all works itself out in in behind there. All right. So anyway, you can check that out under tools. I I could be wrong. I, it's most of the stuff that we do in Zim is first principles where we develop it without. Uh, looking at something else. <laughs> All right, isometric, uh, create a Zim Zap that uses the game module, uh, a board, an isometric board. So if you use the board class, it makes an isometric board or not, you can actually view it from the top view. And believe it or not, you can swap between them. So you can toggle between a top view and an isometric board. You might have to adjust your your um, players or whatever you've got on the board, but the board itself does that and we have examples. 
of doing that. So I don't know if you guys knew there's an isometric bar. Surprisingly, that has been the most popular YouTube video um, in Zim. Uh, maybe not totally, but it, it's more popular than I expected than one would expect. It's got thousands of views where most of the other Zim things are hundreds of views, if if not even up to 100. Okay, newer things, don't see them. One day, you guys, one day, <laughs> one day we'll get there. You're welcome to share the word, right? Obviously, we've got a lot of systems in place to build things very easily. That's why in the front of Zim, we're building things in 37% the size of code of other frameworks. 37% the size because this stuff is simple and we've been doing this a long time. So you're welcome to spread the word. We would love that and continue using Zim. I, I, I don't know what it is. We, we don't seem to have a lot of people using Zim that are uh, social media influencers. They're maybe just too busy build, <laughs> building the stuff or something. <laughs> Uh, maybe, the, uh, you know, I'm not sure. Do, do we need that? But if you could spread the word, that would be wonderful. Anything they could do. Great. Next, dimensional diversion. Woo, woo, woo. Create a Zim Zap that uses the 3 module with 3.js. So we can embed 3.js inside of Zim. We've made a swiper that kind of works with that. Uh, we can use the various Zim controls. We've shown you examples of how to use uh, dials and sliders to operate 3.js stuff. You don't always want to do that. 3.js is a beautiful environment. It's great for 3D. We just, you know, just can't touch it. It's it's great for, for what it does. It allows immersive stuff in there, but it's tricky or a little bit difficult to do, uh, what would you call it? interactive stuff aside from just moving around in it and, and that's good you you want your 3d to be more natural you know hey i just want to move i just want to go there and look at this stuff so it's very much like that zim components are a bit more specific as dials and sliders and stuff with not necessarily numbers on them but you, you've broken you've broken the uh I don't know, the effect of just be living in 3D. You know, all of a sudden you've got buttons and sliders and dials. Oh my, that's that's not quite as um, 3D native, we could call it. But there are times, especially in, in the fields of e-learning, where you might want to control more precisely what you're seeing in your 3D world. So that's, you know, think about that. Uh, look in that direction. Signature pen, create a Zim Zap that uses Zim Pen and motion controller. Uh, please, please take a look at Gen Pen. It's under examples. If you've never used the Zim Pen before, look at Gen Pen and just think that almost everything in Gen Pen, what we're doing there, is out of the box. We've added a whole bunch of components to that. It's like a massive. It's the largest application that we've made. It's all hidden away in there and you wouldn't realize it, but it's coming close to Photoshop or some, you know, basic Photoshop. Uh, it, allow, it has layers in it. So the Zim list has an organizer. You can change which layers are which. You can lock layers. You can drag layers. You can drag sets of layers. Um, so it's got all that. But the main area is it's got menus across the top that are lists that you kind of scroll. It's got different types of pens at the bottom. But the concept is that we can dynamically change what a pen looks as we're using the pen. We can animate the pen so that it gets fatter and skinnier. We can, and I think I've started to see things like this in, um, in mobile tablet apps. My, uh, Roseanne, um, does uh, cartoons and stuff. And I, I've seen her work on the iPad to, on applications that are doing what I see now in Gen Pen. But we invented that. I mean, like, it's, it's not like maybe we weren't the first to do it. But what I mean by inventing is we didn't see it done. We discovered it. It was like when we made the pen and then animated the features of the pen and saw what beauty it could make, <laughs> we went... Oh my God, we got to make a tool that will do this. And, and we did. Um, two or three years later, we saw them on tablets doing something similar. Photoshop still isn't doing stuff like that. They, they had something that was a stamp, I think, or maybe Flash had a stamp where as you draw, it would stamp a certain picture. 
but it has nowhere near as much control as, as what, and you know, the fun bits about it is animating features with easing and stuff like that and seeing the changes um, that it makes. Uh, just because it's right nearby, I may as well show you. Uh, if we go to Zim under generative art right here, we put the P Zim pen under generative art, I think. So here's, here's an example of what was happening. We're animating, as we're drawing, the pen is animating its, its size, and this is a nice ease. But can you tell what's happening? Right here, this one is looping, but not rewinding. So this one is rewinding. So as I draw down here, it gets smaller and bigger. Uh, it looks like this one rewinds, that one rewinds. So rewind gets smaller and bigger, smaller and bigger, smaller and bigger, but looping without rewinding just gets smaller or, or maybe bigger, I'm not sure which way, bigger, and then it loops to the small and then it gets bigger and loops to small. So when we saw this stuff happening with the easing, the easing just makes it look so beautiful and smooth. Uh, it was like, wow, this is so cool. And with Zim V values using series, the, the series, so this is a series of colors, but if we put in an array, it would be random colors, and we can make the series have more than that. And when we start instead, this is the kite tail version of it. When we start using a pen, or sorry, the, a line, just a straight line and change the colors, it's different than this. You have no gaps. You just get like lines of uh, different colors and then there's splatter and there's barbed wire and blah, blah you know it's just like all right out of the box zim pen to let your um, users your your people make using your app have fun <laughs> draw things not only that this is like dragging with the motion controller you just kind of say pen new pen in there and then the motion controller is a press drag and it will make this stuff for you you could also animate it with Zim Animate, and you can animate along a squiggle or a path. So you can animate along a path. You can drag along a path, and it, you can be dragging the pen along a path. Uh, you know, there's all sorts of varieties there. And these are user editable, remember? Okay, so how are we doing? We made it smaller. Game time. Did we do, click that one? Noise. Oh, we definitely looked at these. Layout controller. Uh, what's that one? Isometric board, 3D pen. Okay, next, we're almost there. Just gotta get to 20, two more here. So create a Zim Zap that uses a Zim selector on a Zim tile. Uh, one of the latest components that we made was a selector. It's much like on your television when you have to go from letter to letter. <laughs> Isn't that torturous trying to spell on a television? Oh. I wonder if there's any better way. I mean, maybe talk into the television. Get a keyboard, obviously, would work. But I find it amusing. It's almost like a puzzle. How can I get from one letter to the next the, in the fastest way? How, how good am I at locating letters of the alphabet on this little pad? <laughs> anyway, selectors like that, where it has this box that goes around. A, you can pass in any tile. The tile doesn't have to be a grid. It can be a line. But anyway, the selector moves along and animates from one letter to the other as you, as you go. So that was relatively new. So try that out. Wrap up. Create a Zim Zap that uses a wrapper. So there we go. This was brand new at the time. Uh, a Zim wrapper and a window. So you can put the window in a wrapper. We made, we added to the window a resize. As we were doing things like that, we've got a resize. We've got a collapse and expand. We're going, oh my God, you know, did we really want to doing this? It's like, I feel like I'm making the Windows operating system, having windows, you know, <laughs> collapse and, and drag to change size. But we really needed that for the, to, it, to um, show what the wrapper could do. We put the wrapper in a Zim window and then allow you to, it's got a resize handle at the bottom right hand corner that you can then resize the window. You may not have known that the Zim window has a resize. It does. And uh, we did that for primarily for the wrapper. So a wrapper can be found, I don't know, do we put that under components here? Let's have a look. UI, UX, I think the wrapper's down at the bottom. Uh, there's layers, by the way. Remember layers? There's these things. And so you can pick these parts up. Um, you can. When you drag the layer over, and if you anchor it against the side, 
it um, snaps against the side so all these things could be left at the side and you can pick it up again and bring it back in. Um, there's the tile that's a responsive version. So if you press that example, you can squeeze these things so that they fill in the foot. There's the Zim Pen stuff, uh, more lamps, but you can see that we've changed the colors there. And this is still just one of the pens. It's just kite tail. So there's more pens, there's layers, there's the organizer on it. And then this is the whole, you, you would click on pens and this all goes away. So this is one panel right there. These other things are all kind of more like right along the edges. But this is all the stuff that we're doing to uh, make a variety of different effects. You know what? It's not there. <laughs> okay, so what was I looking for again? The, the wrapper uh, should be pretty easy to find, though. Where did we put the wrapper? Um, well, under examples and look up wrapper, probably. It's, I think it's in 10. Wrapper, wrap, wrapper. There it is. The very last example in the first section. So the featured section, it, it became kind of a combination of almost like finished things like uh, there's gen pen is pretty well finished groovity is pretty well finished alone droid is finished it became a combination of some finished type features there aren't too many in there but then more like what's new in the latest versions of zim and we kept some of the important ones in there so this this sort of series was sort of like the main cat ones etc so even though button down isn't the most impressive uh, one where hopefully we'll make something that's a bit more impressive as we continue. So it's almost like embarrassing. Uh, this is the 13th version of Zim, and we're finally giving you the ability on a button to show some icon when we actually are pressing. We just never use that anymore. We used to use it back when we made CD ROMs, but I thought it went so out of favor that nobody wanted to do that anymore. <laughs> So we never built it into Zim, isn't that funny? But now we're kind of going, all right, we probably should put that. So we did a bit of an overhaul on the button to bring that kind of stuff in. So what we're talking about is there's the rollover. And when I press down, I go to another state. So it's got a press state and a rollover roll off state sort of thing. All right, so anyway, we also changed the default color and up, uh, made this auto so that you can make the button change size depending on the label size. Traditionally, it's been the other way around. You size the button and make the label fit into it. Uh, and that's been no problem. 13 versions without any problem, without even missing any of that stuff. But uh, a few people have asked for it, so we adjusted that. However, I was wanting to take a look at the wrapper, which was right down here. And when we press, here's the Zim wrapper. I'll pull that off like so. So the Zim wrapper is inside oh, i'm not sure how we're doing this is a layout so this is the layout class right now um, but as you can see the wrapper is wrapping just remember that we're on the canvas i don't know if any other framework actually has on the canvas i don't think there's any framework that has wrapping on the canvas like this and then here are all the various uh, settings that you can do and all sorts of so this is the flexbox stuff we're using the Zim tip as you roll over this. It should work. <laughs> or maybe it was when we press it. Yeah, so that's spread. This one is stretch. This one is columns. That one's flip. That one's reverse. This one's bottom. That one's avoid H, avoid V. And this last one, oh, that's a selector that just went along there. This one is wrap. And then you've got aligns, V aligns, align inner, and V align inner. So how to align the actual content within the areas. So all of this stuff does what the Flexbox does primarily. I think it does most of it. it, might do a few things more. Flexbox will do a few things more than this. But they're words that hopefully make a little bit more sense. There's the sort of symbols as to what we're doing. We're spreading it, we're stretching it, we're, we've got columns. So you've got different settings in the Flexbox that do that too, but I have no idea what those things are called. Actually, it might be called those same words, but the same sort of any of these things um, uh, seem quite clear to me, but mind you, I hate it, so maybe that's why. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, okay, so that ended on the wrapper, didn't it? But we're not quite at the end, although do you like that? There there they are, the missions. Bom, bom, bom. And I just wanted to show you that in behind here, whoop, right here, ba-ba, 
here is the missions inside of Slack. So this was all launched uh, as a push to get people to come into Slack to try these new things and win some money. So we wanted to see if that would work. And here's kind of the results of that. This was in 2019, so that's three years ago. Well, December 2019, yeah, that would be three years ago almost exactly. So mission one, here's what you had to do. Here are the people that kind of uh, gave some replies. Here are the replies uh, on the side then. So what we had is each mission was an entry in Slack and then you would use the threads. Threads was actually new to Slack at the time, roughly. And so here on the thread, here's the thread. So we're talking about it, you can post. So there's uh, Andy er Ernie entered this one. Uh, Frank is a judge, he's kind of saying something there. Lily entered. Uh, Sha Shan entered, and this one's now broken, which is sort of too bad. Um, here's the organization for the judges over here. So this was a locked channel where we were talking with the judges. So Amy was a judge, a few other judges. Um, Yalon won this one. These guys uh, that did the judging, those are what the three entries that we had to judge on. Um, the judges submitted their stuff, told me about it. I can't remember if they, they put the answers here or if they emailed me. I think we kept them private even amongst the judges. And here are some people winning uh, other, other entries as well. So we were kind of working on um, the judges there. But if I go back to missions, here was the second one that we did. I uh, didn't see any posts on that one. So nobody did a beads example. Here is the third one we did. Uh, nobody did that one. Here's another one. Um, maybe nobody did that one. Here's one. Some people did this one. So I think Andy did a hit test on a path again. So same fellow as before. Here's another one, two replies. Looks like Andy. Nobody did that one, nobody did that one. I know we got some more. Okay, here's, here's some on game time. You know what I'm thinking is, I think there was a contest a month on any of the four per month or something like that. Maybe we did one each week or something. I can't remember exactly how we did it. But uh, here, here's some more right here. So this was on the frame.follow. So Sam entered in that. And Keat uh, entered on this. And Keat made a pretty cool app. Unfortunately, that link is gone. The reason why uh, somebody on Slack, Carl, um, found this example just on some Google search or something like that. Hey, some student made this lunar lander. I went, yeah, I know. It was it was made for this um, for this contest right here. And so it looked, it was pretty cool. It was fun to use, use physics, very good. It was a good coder. Uh, but unfortunately, link's broken on it, which is too bad. And then we got a reply here. What's that? Just me. Uh, here are four replies on the layout one. So Lily did one. Jeff O made layout. So a couple more people there. And Andy was back here on, on that example. Did I post the winners? Yeah. Okay. So here's a winner with Yalon. And Andy's saying, great with some dice. That was the th on the 3D one. I remember that. These are 3D dice, but right in Zim. There's Sam's winner thing there. Here's Sean's uh, winner. Did sort of a, a COVID um, little barnacle sort of thing three years ago. Start of COVID. So funny. Sean is from um, Wuhan. Wuhan? Is that what I said? Wuhan? Yeah, Wuhan. And so I was looking at her city. She had been talking about her city. I was looking at it in VR and virtual reality. And it wasn't, it didn't have Google Earth. So it didn't, I, I couldn't go anywhere. It was uh, a tourist or a, a person who lived there had uploaded a VR picture in a sense there. And so I'm looking at Wuhan um, over the river. There it is, this beautiful futuristic city with this river. And, and you know, I could look around in, in my VR headset. Then I took my VR headset to my friend Rick and Ada's for New Year's. We all went to Rick and Ada's for New Year's. I showed them that, I, you know, I had Ada try on the VR headset, but it wasn't synced to their Wi-Fi. So it was just frozen kind of on the last thing that happened to be in there. And it was Wuhan. And that's when, <laughs> like, it was like, I, I, when I was at the party, it was like, oh, there's some glitch, man. We can't seem to go anywhere. I'm not sure why this is working. It was like, we had a bug. 
And later, I realized, you know, two months later, I realized, oh, my God, you know, that was when COVID, <laughs> did, we, did we cause COVID? That was, the, that was the break. At the time, what did they call it? It was Corona, the coronavirus. Um, isn't that funny? Uh, so anyway, that uh, she had done a, a Wuhan thing there. All right, next, um, Jeff O going, is the contest still on? So my response to that is here, well, we lost it from the front when Cat came out. So it must have been during Zim 10. And so the contest was in Zim 10. Zim Cat came out and no longer did it have that, you know, fancy front to the contest. And we only had one or two entries a month. So we sort of stopped it, I guess. It was kind of like, you know, uh, we tried. We tried really hard. So the purpose of this Explore is to show you how hard we tried to do a contest. It's not the only contest we've tried. We've tried it other times too. And it's just sort of a little bit disheartening to not be able to um, uh, capture, you know, the usage. There, there's just like too few people trying it. Was, you know, so, it, was, um, it was, you know, hard to see all that work on the contest kind of um, happen and not really go anywhere. I mean, it was fun for what it was, and it's fun to do. It's always fun to do the work. I, don't get me wrong; I love making this kind of stuff. So, <laughs> you know, I could, couldn't imagine a better time of it than than doing all these the sort of the graphics and the spy thing. Uh, and it was a lot of fun too. On I don't know if you noticed that, but when we were launching them here, we went beyond the the visual, the graphical posts, and you could read about it. Mission one: follow, create a zap. That's uh, that's code for a Zim app, but it's nice and quick. The thread, uh, that was sort of general thing there. But follow is a method of frame and also a method of physics. They work the same way. So we described it. We gave examples. So there's examples of that stuff happening. This actually would be quite nice as um, just sort of like an overview of some of the new things. But that's what Zim bubbling is. Zim bubbling is now up to like 160 videos or something like that. I'm bubbling. That at one point there weren't wasn't any videos, and we, we kind of thought we were done. We started we started the Zim bubbling series. <laughs> I can't remember when, something like in Zim Neo or maybe, I don't know, maybe it was earlier than that. But uh, we weren't expecting 167 more features from from that point in in such a short period of time as well. Uh, we are, of course, slowing down as as we've made many things, but we'll see. Anyway, so this would have been a good view into it and the thing is it's available right now because we can go back in slack but as soon as six days from now it's gone we won't be able to see this we won't have these links i've, I've downloaded this and it, it gets downloaded as json files <laughs> with tons of information for each post and it's sort of like oh Okay, well, that's going to be virtually useless, but at least I, I do have this content uh, downloaded. So there you go. So if you um, are here, you're welcome to go try and find missions. Just note that it has closed the contest, but you can go back and look through all of this. I am Dr. Abstract, and you know what this has been, right? Dum, 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 dum. This has been... A Zim Explorer. Ooh, hopefully that was fun. A look back through the missions contest. Come join us. Zimjs.com slash Slack. Zimjs.com slash Discord. We'd love to hear from you here and have you make as many things with Zim as we have. <laughs> May, and that's how we should sign up. May you make as many things with Zim and have so much fun. We, we do have a lot of fun with Zim. We love bringing it to you. Of course, it is a lot of work. If you are doing this for business, you're welcome to join us at zimjs.com slash donate, I think. That's our Patreon way to get there. Look at the links in the bottom. All right, have a great day or night. Cheers. If you are a student or without means, definitely don't worry about it. Bye-bye.